والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله and welcome to the beauties of islam I'm your host Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I wanted to continue talking about one of the things I find to be so beautiful in Islam and that is where we go beyond the human rationale the human logic we go way above that and we find the wisdom of almighty God now you and I cannot think like God we can't even get close to that in fact we don't able to even fathom what it is to have this kind of knowledge at the same time though we do have some knowledge we do have some logic we do have some common sense and so this is a good time for us to compare it or size up against the knowledge of almighty god and one of the examples i would like to use here we find in the quran it's the teaching about the story of karun Karun was the one who lived at the time of Moses. I don't know if you've read that or not, but you should take the time to read the story about Karun because what happened was he in fact was a very knowledgeable person by our standards at least. Through his knowledge and his trading and so on, he was able to accumulate a large amount of wealth. So much so that Allah describes his wealth in the Quran as being so much that it would take a small army of men to carry the keys we're talking about the keys to his wealth a lot of treasures a small group of men just to carry the keys for his treasures but look what he said he said it was because of his knowledge Now some people warned him and they said you know it's really because of Allah Allah is the one who gives you things and in fact we know in Islam that Allah is all rizq that whatever you have it comes from Allah your rizq we call it daily bread in English language your rizq comes from Allah my rizq comes from Allah uh, whatever we have comes from Allah but this man is saying no it's because of my knowledge I'm the one that has it because I earned it. I have this knowledge that other people don't have. So much so that a lot of people began to praise him and wonder about him. Look at this guy. He's so wealthy. Karun is really loaded, man. We would like to be like him. But then Allah caused an amazing thing to happen. The earth began to sink and in some explanations said it was almost like quicksand that began to sink and pull down and all of his treasures all of his wealth all the things that he owned started going down down into the ground and him with it and the, and one of the narrations said that it went down all of it gone except just his head sticking up almost as if to say well where's your knowledge now and the people all said no i don't want to be like harun today not me mm mm So what we find out from this story is that it isn't your knowledge and sooner or later it's going to really backfire on you. If he was so smart, I guess he wouldn't have accumulated all of his heavy wealth and put it all in one place in a place that is going to sink down. So obviously he didn't have all the knowledge. Not at all. In fact, somebody was telling me at one time when I was working in the prison ministries and I was uh, Yeah, visiting with about 200 inmates at a gathering i asked them who here doesn't believe in god i had asked how many were christians and jewish and different religions but i said who here doesn't believe in god at all and one man he raised his hand and i said you don't believe he said nope i said in all these other prisoners they believe and you don't he said nope i don't believe in nothing I said one thing about it you got a lot of guts you're willing to say that in front of uh, 199 criminals and you're willing to tell them that uh, they're stupid for believing something but you don't believe he said that's right I said okay can you just tell us then how did you get here he said what do you mean I said well how did you get here I mean you don't believe in god you don't have any belief in anything he said that's right I said, well, how'd you get here? He said, I'm self-made. I said, what's that? He said, I'm self-made. 
I said, can you clarify that? He said, yes. Ever since I was inside my mother, my brain has been working and my brain makes me what I am. I'm self-made. I said, you are. He said, that's right. I said, how did you come into existence? He said, I willed myself into existence. I said, what? What's this? He said, yes. Everything is from my mind. I have a, a, you know, I'm able to do things with my mind. I said, you are. He said, yes. I said, and you have this power. He said, I have the power of the mind. I said, so you don't believe in God? He said, I am my own God. I said, what? He said, I am my own God. I said, oh, really? So you're telling me, excuse me for us non-God people, okay? You're telling me that you have power? You're God? He said, I'm my own God. I said, okay. Then can you explain to me why when all these other prisoners are here, would like to get out, and you have all this power, then uh, why are you in here? Why don't you just, like, use your mind and get out? Well, everybody started laughing. <laughs> they said, this guy is a joke, you know. <laughs> this is funny. I said, okay. But I want to ask you another question. If you have this power of the mind, can you do things? He said, yes, I can do anything. I said, anything, okay. Tell you what, can you grow one hair out of your face while we watch? Just grow one hair. Can you do that? He couldn't say anything. I said, I got another one for you. We Muslims, we fast the month of Ramadan. We don't eat, we don't drink during the daylight hours. So can you do that? Can you go without food or drink for a whole month? I'm talking about night too. Don't eat at all. If you're your own God, why do you need to eat? Why do you need to drink? He said, I can't do that. I would die. I said, that's right. I'm going to ask you another question. Could you just like drink all you want? Drink all you want. Go ahead. All the liquid, tea, coffee, soda, water. Drink all you like. And just don't go to the bathroom for two days. Huh? <laughs> I said, and you think you're God, huh? Let's take a break, and I want to come back and tell you the rest of this story. Sit right there. You're watching Beauties of Islam. We'll be right back after this. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. <laughs> back and you're watching the beauties of Islam we've been talking about the human logic the human brain and rationale common sense over God's knowledge and I've been trying to make a point about what I was saying and I mentioned about a prisoner who in <laughs> in prison was considering he was his own God and we said well if you were God what are you doing in prison you know but I would like to expound on that a little bit and let you think about something Often the human beings begin to think that they are their own God and they want to make their own way. I will use my brain, I'll look around, see what it's all about, then I'll decide what I'll do and what I won't do. This is a very irrational approach, even though a person thinks they're using their own common sense. The reason is because of something else that they forgot to take into consideration. <clears throat> and that is... 
They did not create themselves, nor did they create the environment wherein they exist. If you created yourself and you created your own environment, then yes, you should be the one to dictate what the way will be. In Arabic, it's called deen. Your deen, yes. If you created yourself and you created your environment, you dictate the deen, go ahead. But not so is the case in reality because we didn't create ourselves and we didn't create our environment, the ahwal that we live in. This is coming to us from the real creator, the real sustainer of all that exists. And he's told this clearly in his book. And you can read it in the Quran in chapter 3, verse 19. Allah says, In the dina in the lahil islam. And the meaning here for this is that we understand Allah is saying that the only way of life the one that he is prescribing for us, for sure, is submission to him in peace. Islam means submission to God in peace. So whoever is doing that, they're doing that way, then they're in the deen of Allah. But if you try to make up your own deen, what will happen? Well, you'll get lost. And this is what's happened to so many people over the centuries, is they try to make up their own deen. They want to make their own way. But in fact, it will never work. And Allah says about that in the same chapter, chapter 3, verse 85. That whoever wants to make up their own way, not Allah's way, then Allah is not going to accept that from them. And then the hereafter, they're going to be with the losers. Now, often the translations miss the point in English, and they say whoever wants a religion other than Islam, Allah won't accept it, and then hereafter they'll be with the losers. But actually, if you give it that meaning, you kind of you lose a lot. You don't give the full impact. Allah is not talking about religion. He's talking about something much bigger, your way of life. Islam is a full and total and complete package that you don't need to use your rationale. You don't need to use your thinking to revise it. You use your akal, your mind, your brain to determine that it is from God and then you accept it because you've now used your mind as much as you can to determine that, yes, this is the way, and then you stay on that way, regardless if now your mind is occasionally saying, well, I don't know, maybe this, maybe that, but don't rethink it, and don't try to remake it, because if you do, it's not going to be Allah's deen anymore. Allah's deen, His way, the way that we're talking about here, is perfected. And it was perfected at the time of Muhammad, وسلم, and there's no two ways about it. Because Allah says, Al Yomal Akmautu Lakum Dinakum wa at Mamtu Alikum Nipmati wa Raditulakum Islam Adina. It means here that Allah is telling us that the deen, the way of life for human beings, is perfected on this day. Allah is saying, It's perfected for you. And I have conferred upon you my biggest of Nitma, Nitma or favors of Allah, and have chosen for you to submit chosen for you to surrender, chosen for you to obey me. That's the deal. But do it in peace. It means no matter what comes, you're going to be at peace. If I give you a lot of goodies, you'll say, Alhamdulillah. If I give you a difficulty, you'll say, Alhamdulillah. If you find yourself happy, you'll say, Alhamdulillah. If you find a difficulty, you're sad, you're, you'll still say, Alhamdulillah. The praise to Allah, because you will understand that I am in this only because He has put me here. That's the meaning more or less behind what we've been talking about. It's the difference between trying to use your akal, your brain, your logic for more than what it was intended for. We were only supposed to come to the conclusion there is God and He's one and His way is one. It's Islam. And that is the biggest of the beauties of Islam. Don't forget to check our website beautiesofislam.com Till next time, peace. Salaam alaikum. Islam is peace. Islam.